Kentucky Senator Rand Paul is not exactly torching the presidential polls at the moment. Face it, in some of the numbers, you have to break out a microscope to find him. But as discovered in my one-on-one -on -one with the Republican presidential candidate, he's not going anywhere and believes he can shock the world come Iowa. But first, he and others have to overcome the Trump factor. And what he has to say about the man who does lead the polls is tinged with what one might consider a personal opinion of the current frontrunner. And it's fighting words. Let's get back to work with Rand Paul, straight up and one-on-one. -on -one. There's still time, and I think what's going to happen, and this is why it's such a disaster and why Donald Trump would be probably the largest loser of any candidate ever in the history of the country if he were our nominee, because he so polarized the debate that do you think women are going to nominate some guy who judges people by their appearance and calls you know, another uh, candidate ugly? Do you think they're going to nominate somebody who implies that most Hispanics are rapists and drug dealers? And Oh, yeah, there might be a few of them that are not. You know, that kind of attitude is such and so polarizing that we'd get, we'd get just swamped in a landslide. Ultimately, people are going to wake up, I think, and see the majority of Republicans will wake up and see, oh, my goodness, we can't nominate this. This would be a disaster for our party and for the country. Is he then, in your opinion, the single most dangerous thing that could happen not only to the Republican Party, but to America? He's the worst nominee that we could possibly think of. And uh, part of the reason is, is he's not really a Republican. I mean, he's recently become a Republican, but he's been a Democrat for most of his life. For 65 of his 69 years, he was a Democrat. For 65 of his 69 years, he supported liberal policies, bailing out the banks, the government stimulus where we borrow money and just throw it away. He also supports using eminent domain to take private property from individual property owners, small property owners, and give it to big corporations like his. He actually tried to take the house of a woman for a parking lot for one of his casinos. This is his mode of doing business, and he's jolly well with it. He's like, he loves it. Then why is he leading double digits? How is he? It's, it's almost as if he's, he's a, a magician at this point. <laughs> I think it's because we're still early and people haven't started looking really seriously at the record. And this is why the polls are overemphasized at this point, because we have a horse race. And what we're showing is a horse race of the leaners, the undecided, and the maybe not yet even going to consider voting. When you do a poll of 200 people and 85 percent of them have not yet decided, but you say, oh, no, no. Really, who would you pick if you were going to pick, even though you're not yet decided? That's a very soft poll, and that's why you see such movement. You're going to still see a great deal of movement. I predict by the end of January, right before the poll, right before the caucus in, um, in Iowa, I think you're going to see a reshuffling, and you might have five or six people in double digits, but nobody in 20%. I think it's going to be free-for-all, and I think people will, will have to stay up late that night to find out who wins Iowa. Do you think America is just simply too smart to elect Donald Trump as president? Absolutely. What about Hillary Clinton, then? Because we talked about dangerous. You talked about the danger of Donald Trump. How dangerous would it be, in your opinion, if Hillary Clinton becomes president? I think it's equally dangerous, maybe not Hillary Clinton just by herself, but the idea that a dominant force seems to be in the Democratic Party that socialism is a good thing. And so when I go to college campuses, I spend quite a bit of time on Bernie. I say, you look, there's nothing sexy or cool about socialism. There's the implication of force that has to be used. And there's also the understanding, or needs to be understanding, that socialism is anti-choice. It takes away the choice of individuals to decide what they want to sell or what they want to buy. And if you choose to challenge the state, they have to get rid of you. They have to arrest you or they have to eliminate you. This is why Stalin killed millions and millions of people. Mao Zedong killed millions and millions of people because socialism ultimately requires force and there's nothing good about this. Also, just from a practical purpose, it just doesn't work. The reason we won the Cold War is because the engine of capitalism defeated the engine of socialism. And people need to understand why we were once great and why we still have lingering greatness. It's because of freedom and capitalism, freedom of exchange. They're all the same thing. You may not vote for Rand Paul come the presidential primaries. You may not think that he is the guy, but he is a fascinating individual. One more time. Friday, right here on the hard line, 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific, we will talk with the senator, the presidential candidate. Now, would you vote for him? Has he done anything this week to convince you that he's the guy who should be the GOP candidate? Tell us. Email, Facebook, Twitter, we'll talk about it all right here on the hard line.